my personal experience of divine truth, resistance to the way. Recorded on the 21st of April 2019 in Brisbane, Queensland, Australia. Hello again. I just wanted to add another video to this little batch of videos I've done about divine truth and my personal experience of divine truth and um, this might be the last one for this little group of videos um, so I've titled this video my personal resistance to the way um, and I feel to put this on there just to sort of elucidate and give a little bit more detail to why I've struggled so much with divine truth and um, that way I can move forward with my desire of sharing things to do with spirituality and I, d I have a desire to share what I've learned and some of the insights I've had regarding love and what I feel is the most important thing um, in our learning and growth on earth and after. So um, I will start with just where I first came across the material called The Way. I think I went to the sem seminar and um, after that seminar, it would have been around 2012, um, I went and I think I probably listened to it uh, afterwards as, as well and I found that a very, very powerful talk um, because it put me in this intellectual space of recognizing that it was it, it it was what he was saying which is that the way to to um, living in harmony with God's love and truth is like a very straight and very narrow path and cramped and narrow is the way, as it says in the Bible. Um, so I really took that and it had a really big impact on the way that I was living at the time. And as I've said in previous videos, I, I was praying almost constantly. If, if it was not just in my mind, there was certainly moments where I was despairing and crying in despair and, um, and when I wasn't doing that I was constantly thinking about things but uh, what happens when you pray is it seems to create this sort of period of time where a lot of the influences are able to be shield, shielded from you during the time that you're willing to be looking at yourself um, from a truthful perspective, from God's perspective. Um, so, yeah, so that, that's what happened back there. I, I, I really took that um, talk and put all my energy into everything I had absorbed from it. And what came out from that was... Um, I eventually connected to God and in quite a big way for, like for me because I'd never really had a very conscious relationship with God um, and that's another topic because I feel that our relationship with God can start very early in our life and we maybe not aware or have any sort of concept of what what's going on 
um, but on this subject of my resistance to the way, um, yeah, it's a very it's very hard to put into words when you've had a whole life of spirit influence and you've had a whole life of um, not knowing who you are and like the, there is a lot of resistance um, for most people when it comes to actually living the way um, and I think one of my flaws is that I'm very black and white thinking um, um, it can be a flaw depends on how you go about um, processing that idea or accepting that idea that truth is black and white there's no grey in truth it's either yes or it's no it's either up or it's down and, and I'm a very like I've been a very um, black and white person for, 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 for periods of my life I would say and um, and for the largest periods of my life I would say I'm in the grey area or just in the black area because you're not quite seeing anything when you're not in the truth and so one of the key parts of that talk the way um, I felt was this concept of living in the truth living in the emotional truth of yourself and of God's truth so for myself that's where this path to God really came to light for me um, and that concept is a reality and that's what we all need to do to in fact be loving we need to be living in the truth and whichever path you've chosen so far or, or would like to choose um, that's something you, you will have to do you'll have to live in your emotional truth and that, that's a moment by moment thing because we're emotional beings and we're constantly emitting and existing and whether you're feeling an emotion or you're suppressing or denying it or you know whatever you're doing any moment that's passing there's something going on emotionally and so this talk in particular I'll probably put a link below um, just so you can find the information and find out for yourself from Jesus who has got a much better um, way of saying all this um, since he's in a very good soul condition um, he's in, in fact in the best soul condition of people I've ever met so I, I feel he's the most loving person on this planet at this time apart from many 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 angels and bright beings of love that are around us very often um, so just getting back to what I was saying about um, living in the truth um, it's a very very challenging thing to do very very difficult um, 
on earth in this day and age. Um, the the things that you bump up against is is is. I mean, there, there's a list of things really, but the 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 trick to actually becoming at one with God is to actually never give up on prayer. Never to never give up on longing for God's love and seeking more and more amounts of that love. Because if you have that kind of attitude and that kind of motivation, you will become at one with God. Um, it's an inevitable situation. If you continue to seek and continue to pray, it's when we give up on prayer and we go back to old ways of living and addictive behaviours, then what God can't work with that because we're basically, you know, God's in front of us and we're basically turning around, turning to face the other direction and God can't do much with that. So as soon as we're walking away emotionally, so just for example, just... Um, a, a, a person has come up and faced a truth in a relationship and one of the persons in the relationship says to the other I've never really loved you and then the other person reacts with a deep well of sadness and anger and a fluctuating just in these emotions of rage and and sadness and grief. So, in this example, um, what's happening is the person is displaying the fact that they're in a resistance to God because, from God's perspective, that anger is not justified, it's not loving, and you know, God's doing, in that example, everything that God can do in her, within the, the laws that she's constructed around the universe and how everything is operating. It's, you know, it's a moment of exposing an emotion and that person can choose to feel it truthfully or they can choose to feel it untruthfully and you know if she's in a if she's yelling at the person and blaming the the other person or if, if he's yelling at the other person and blaming the other person for 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 what's happened or the truth in in the example then you know that's not living in the truth because if they were in the truth they would have be telling themselves this anger is not justified and they would be praying like mad to get to why why do i feel justified in this and you know it's a process of 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 going down step by step through into emotional change it's like there's your you know we're we're all living up in our heads a lot of the time because we're not feeling our emotions if we were if we were truly feeling our emotions we'd be yeah, it's hard to imagine a person who's feeling their emotions 100 percent of the time but that's basically what angels are doing that's basically what people who have you know, enlightened or at one with God or however you would like to say is basically what those people are doing. The only difference between them um, and and the average person is that they've already gone through all the negative emotions, all the unloving emotions and released them one by one. And so they're a completely emotional being so they've got nothing negative left in, inside of their soul.
there's no emotional cause, no injury driving their existence, their, their, what they're doing. And you can only imagine a person who's got no anger, no fear, no grief, none of those emotions. Imagine a person like that. <laughs> it's hard to imagine, isn't it? I mean, we all can imagine if you if you really sit with it and feel your emotions. And I, I encourage you to do that if you, <laughs> it's a worthwhile exercise. I've done it in the past. And, um, you know, as I've said in previous videos, I'm, I feel quite... Um, well, I haven't said that, but the truth is that I'm still resisting a lot of my emotions and I'm, you know, it's something I, 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 I need to probably do it myself. But having done it in the past, I, I highly recommend it to just sit there and imagine. So as I was saying, my suggestion is just, just to do an experiment and sit with that idea see what you feel about with it, about it and if you know me just even saying that what what's your reaction to that idea anyhow anyhow that's if you're you know wanting to explore divine truth um so back to this resistance so yeah there's lots of forms of resistance i mean uh, there's active denial, which is like, you know, purposefully denying something. And then there's denial where it's sort of like you just don't want to become aware of something. You, you so strongly don't want to know about something. Um, and... You know, what I've found is that it's been a real struggle first to, to make any headway. Like, it took me a long time to really feel like I understood the path to God. And um, and once I, I just started to understand it, I just felt like I'd got, I got hammered and... Um, and I allowed it, you know, I allowed this because of my resistance so you know you've got so for you know for myself it was like i've got fighting's resistance of myself resisting myself you know not wanting to feel emotions and then on top of it having all these other people around me encouraging me to not feel my emotions and um you know being a, a you know open to the spirit world it's it's been a blessing and a curse so it's like it's a blessing when you want to feel your emotions because it's really helpful to go through fears and and emotions that you need to release but then when you don't want to feel your emotions it's if it, it can feel like a curse it can feel like oh geez you know it's like opening a can, can of worms and you can't put the worms back in the in the can and seal it up because it's they're out of the bag so to speak um, so I don't know maybe I'll one of one example for me with resistance um, in in the past I mean when I first came to the D divine truth I I sort of felt like I could hear certain things that they were teaching and then other things I probably couldn't hear or or probably heard out of context um, and so I just went with what I was conscious of or, or getting and the big message I got out of the first period of time first year or so was just express your emotions and and um, experiment with the fact that there's a God. So I did a lot of like writing 
you know, to what I really felt about the whole concept and, you know, grabbed my steering wheel and found a safe place to express what I felt about God, which is anger and rage. I remember, like, in the beginning, uh, the whole, whole idea of there being a God, um, I just was like, you know, I had all these arguments that were like, oh, you know, what about all the bad things in the world, you know, all this people who are raping and people who are warring and all these things and what about the poor little person in, you know, another country who doesn't even have a dollar to eat or do anything and being abused and, you know, it goes on and on and on, you know, the evils of the world. And so I was like, how can God let all that happen, you know? And, um... So I, in my mind, I was just like, God's to blame. God's to blame for everything because God's God, you know. God's supposed to be the big, powerful, creating force of all things. So, But I didn't really understand that, no, God didn't create all that. <laughs> we human beings in our past, you know, created that. And we inherited what they created. And unfortunately, you know, it's a lot of unlovingness. So, um, yeah, so where, you know, my hope is that by sharing some of my personal resistances to the world is that um, other people will resonate and recognize their resistances and and start to look at them and start to see them as a problem and start to see them as something that can be changed and that um, in fact that that's something that is our responsibility we're responsible for what we're creating and I, I feel like I want to you know put a big siren or a big sign out in, in telling everyone, you know, we're creating this. We're creating our. There, there are laws that are governing what's happening for you personally and me personally, and the world out there. And we're powerful. Like we're affecting everything. You know, like we're affecting the edge of the universe. I mean. We're <laughs> unbelievably, we, we can't really imagine until, we won't know until we're really connected to God about the full truth of things. But by, you know, I've really felt some truth from God about some of these things. Otherwise, I wouldn't be speaking about it. And, um, you know, it's... It's good to finally talk about some of these things because I've, um, I've sort of like, I'm, a, I'm a, a, a strange candidate for progress towards God because I've sort of like, I've got, a, I've got a foot in one world and a foot in the other world. I've got a foot in the humans you know, on earth, and then I've got a foot in God's world, and it's it's been real difficult to live like this, it's been really hard, I mean, and not feeling like I'm in a position to, to um, help anyone. But yet my heart wants to do what it wants to do. I, I mean, I've been, I, I feel like if I was really honest in my life, I would have started talking about this on YouTube 10 years ago. 
and I have to correct something. I think I was a, maybe 21 or 22. I, I think in the other video I said I was 23 when I found, came across Divine Truth. But it was really like, I went through like this preparation period before I found the Divine Truth. I went through this period of like, um, you know, I went, I went to like these self-help seminars and I did all these things like, and what I noticed was a pattern was that every time I had an emotional ch change, in other words, like every time I cried authentically, um, I got, there was a forward motion with new experiences and new information and and I remember at this one particular weekend seminar, um, it was designed to help people have a breakthrough in their life and get somewhere because they were feeling stuck or whatever the, the issue was. And for me, it was sort of like, I had these, I had these really big dreams, these really big dreams for, the, for, the, for my life and for the world. And I, I really wanted to create creative things that was going to help the world and and show the world um, that we can do different to what we what what the world does. We can do something that's going to be way better. The only thing was that at that time I didn't know what that was, and I remember at that seminar I remember having this. They, they did some exercise which led you through a series of um, imaginings and um, and there was music playing and it was very and I feel like my the thing that's opened my soul in my life is music has always been a like a catalyst to open and and I remember having a big emotional upheaval at that seminar I mean, everyone in the room was, this is not divine truth, this is, um, it, well, it was, it, I'll say, it was Breakthrough to Success um, weekend seminar, it was a free event by a man called Christopher Howard, and um, he, he was, he's a very um, likeable, charismatic sort of person, doing these things and it, I, you know, I got this free ticket so of course I went <laughs> and you know, me being a curious young person I just wanted to see and so like I'm not, um, I mean that was, that was a turning point for sure but there was many others, that was just one example, I remember, I remember breaking up with my first girlfriend, that was a big emotional thing. I mean, we were together for about four years, and and then before that um, was uh, I remember like grade eight at high high school, like coming home and feeling really ashamed that I was becoming a, a um, you know discovering myself as a sexual being, and um, I remember going home and I. I one of the patterns I've recognized in my life is that uh, when things get really painful in my in my life or in my childhood, what I would do is I'd go and tell my mother, my mum, and I usually would cry about what's going on. And you know, mum, my mum's got this um, a certain nature. I think has allowed me to be open to the female side of God t to to some degree. Um, on on the on the male side of God, I'm very distorted at this point in time. I mean, there's been moments where I've had clarity about it, and and I could really understand the truth about the male masculine part of God. To some, you know, it's hard to talk about, but that's that's my main issue. That's what I'm struggling with. I'm still, I'm basically on my own path at this point in time. Um, 
and I, I sort of termed it nature's way. It's It's been a way for me to kind of psychologically cope with um, this these resistances I've begun to mention here. Um, resistances to going God's way. And for me, um, I don't recommend um, having so much resistance. It's really been a struggle. So um, hopefully... At some point, I'll I'll make um, a turning point, and um, part of the thinking that's got me here into this position has been this idea that um, at some point, I don't know, maybe 2013 or 2014, um, some of the material that was being presented, I sort of, I sort of. I guess I, I took what they were saying and um, experimented with it in the wrong direction, if that makes any sense. Like going, okay, well, um, I'm going to do the wrong thing and see what happens, basically. And, um, and that sort of led me into this position where I've sort of I've termed it nature's way, so I'm just sort of going with, you know, I'm not I'm not trying to walk a straight narrow path at this point in time is what I'm trying to say, and I, I feel like that's I want to get onto that path, but that's not where I'm at. I'm not on that straight and narrow path, and um, you know. Having been on that straight and narrow path, maybe maybe the little, the kindergarten, you know, nature walk I went down, you know, it was not, it was a straight, narrow path, it was cramped and, but it was awesome and it was really life changing and it was the best thing I ever did and, um, so, please, I, you know, if you want to experiment with divine truth, it's the best thing that you could ever do. Um, but try the experiments that Jesus suggests. Don't do the Josh's experiments. I mean, you can do whatever you want. Do do your own experiments. But um, it, it'd be far better to to um, yeah to be on the way. Um, and um, I'm sort of. Um, if, you'd, if you'd like to know about my current path, I might do another video on that. Um, but um, and I'm, I'm going to do another series of videos um, and one of the topics is going to be divine love or and or um, natural love. So... Um, you know, having been in this extreme amount of resistance with divine truth for myself, I've had, I've naturally sort of ebbed and flowed back into looking at ways of being and, and lifestyles that come from a lot of what I have viewed as natural love teachings. And to be honest, I don't really know all that much about, about the natural love path in the sense that um, I haven't seen Jesus present all that much material about the natural love path because he's teaching the divine love path or God's way of love or the way. Um, so, um, so in, in my mind, the natural love path is it's it's all about developing the love within yourself um, and what I've found since sort of you know being in such resistance with divine truth is that the natural of path is just as hard if not harder than God's way but the thing that I've sort of liked about the natural of path is not all this pressure on me to make big changes rapidly and 
to, to be honest, that's one thing about the divine love path or the way that I I enjoyed it while I was going through changes, but then when I got resistive, um, I just really didn't like that impending feeling of like, um, you know, I need to face the next issue and next, and it's it's, and I remember I really got derailed on that when I when I got to this feeling of like wow, this is like ongoing, you know, and, and sort of realizing that, hey, maybe this isn't going to take a few years, like I sort of maybe misheard Jesus say it at one point on one of the seminar videos on, um, it's all on YouTube now, by the way, if I, uh, in one of, in my first video, I mentioned that, um, oh, you know, I've got, you know, have a look at the DVDs, all the DVDs are are now on YouTube, so, you know, if anyone wants to find the information, it's just type in Divine Truth on the internet, and, um, so, I mean, I've got a bunch of DVDs in here that I'm not really doing anything with, so, if anyone's sort of in my immediate sphere of existence, I'd be happy to, um, I'd be happy to, to give them to someone who would be wanting to look at them. And I admit I feel like a, an attachment to them, so I'd have to feel my way about that. But um, that's another side note. But anyway, um, so I was talking about the natural love path and and the divine love path or God's way of love or the way um, and sort of comparing the two and I'm comparing the two and I'll, I will do another video I think uh, about that but yeah, I was comparing the two because it il it's illustrating one point about resistance and in my example of resistance um, the nat natural love path is um, is an extreme resistance to God, in fact, and um, it's actually while you can develop and grow in a loving direction, you're actually committing one of the biggest sins. Um, you're missing the mark. You you're missing the source, you're missing God, you're missing that direct personal relationship with the loving being, God, the great loving being. I mean, there's so many different ways to talk about all this stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the language I'm using is just the best that I can do for the moment. Um, so yeah, this video is getting lengthy. And I, um, I think I'll leave it there. And I'd like to thank you if you did watch through these series of videos. Um, this is me sharing myself with you. Um, and I, I, I'll, I, I do feel like I need to um, um, do more of it, more of this. Um, just sort of processing as I go. But anyway, thanks for watching through this, um, my personal experience of Divine Truth series of videos, and I look forward to sharing more um, in a different format, different series of videos. So, all the best. God bless. Cheerio.